Well, we do receive voicemails here at the core. You can call us this weekend anytime and just leave us your voicemail question. Make sure you let us know your name and where you're calling from. And here's a voicemail that came in from Clayton in Kansas. Hey, Pastor Adriel. Uh, my question had to do in reference to tithing. So I believe the first example of tithing in the Bible is in Genesis 14 when Abram gives the tithe to Melchizedek after rescuing Lot from his enemies. And then I think of the Lord telling the Israelites in Deuteronomy about the laws of giving of the first fruits. And in Proverbs chapter 3, it talks about honoring the Lord with your possessions and the first fruits of all your increase. And so I was wondering, what is the biblical view of tithing? I understand it's a 10%, but would that be of your gross income or your net income? So that's my question, and I look forward to hearing your answer. Thank you. Excellent question. You know, I was just having a conversation with a group of guys the other night um, from my church, and we were talking about the things that, you know, sometimes pastors can be, you know, timid, uh, subjects a pastor can be timid around. One of them, he, you know, that was brought up was was giving, which probably says something about me as a pastor because, you know, he, he was saying, man, giving is such a blessing, giving to the work of the ministry, giving to, the, um, you know, the advancement of the gospel, giving to those who are in need. And yet a lot of pastors kind of feel like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to talk about giving or tithing. Partially, and I and I get this, I mean, this is why I feel this way, is, is because you look at all of the abuses that are out there. Um, you think of the prosperity gospel, you think of people who turn on, you know, religious broadcasting television, and there's some preacher up there who's saying, you just got to sow your seed, you just got to give your 10% or this special gift, and, and God is going to bless you in these ways, and, and it's it just feels real slimy, uh, to be honest. And and so I'm getting to to answer your question, but I guess what I would want to say is, man, when we talk about this, when we talk about tithing, when we talk about giving to the um, to the work of the ministry, we really should highlight the blessing, the real blessing. One that God has blessed us with the ability to give, but also the fact that God has um, God has overwhelmingly been generous towards his people, right? When we think about the gospel of his grace, when we think about all of his provision in our lives, we ought to give not from a sense of, okay, how do I calculate the exact number? Um, and I mean, I, I understand that we want to be faithful to the Lord. Um, we, we want to make sure that we're not holding back from God. But I think, I think one big question we should ask ourselves is just, am I stingy? Um, am I stingy with God? Am I stingy with the people around me? Do I give grudgingly? Is it just like, oh, I got to figure out what the what the right number is so that way, okay, I can be fine and just sort of, you know, uh, make sure that I'm covering my bases, spiritually speaking, quote unquote. That's not how we should give. We should give with hearts full of joy because God has given to us so much. And I think that's what Paul is getting at in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. The point is this, verse 6, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. He doesn't even bring up the, the concept or the idea of the tithe here. He's just saying, look, each one must give, verse 7, as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you have all sufficiency in all things at all times, and you may abound in every good work as it is written. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. I mean, what, what, a, what, a, what a promise there. He's saying God is going to bless you when you do this, when you give with a, with a cheerful heart. And so, and so, look, that's not to say that tithing is, is not a thing. And, of course, there is debate about, you know, what does that look like for believers under the New Testament? You know, we're not bound by the ceremonial laws of the old covenant believers. And the fact of the matter is, is when you when you think about all the things that they would tithe back then, it was probably more than just 10 percent. Um, different scholars like Craig Blomberg have talked about this. He has a book on um, money and uh, possessions in scripture. Um, and, and others have, have talked about this as well. So so I think, you know, I encourage the people in my church, I say, a tithe is is good, you know. Giving giving ten percent, I think typically people give probably ten percent of of their net income, not 
um, of of their gross. But I think they could give, and, and some even do give. I'm sure. I don't. I don't have the numbers. It's not something I look at as a pastor. Um, uh, you know, it's not like I know who gives what and how much they give within my church. Um, but I, I'm I'm certain that there are people who give more than that, based on what Paul says in Second Corinthians chapter nine, because they want to give. You know, with with a cheerful heart, because God has blessed them, and they're they're able to. And so, I would say, prayerfully think about, okay, yeah, you know, I think a tithe is kind of a good baseline, but prayerfully think about, God, how can I be generous to what's happening here um, in the life of the church, to the advancement of the gospel, to the work of the ministry? How can I listen to what Jesus said when He said, "Don't store up treasure here on earth." where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but but store up treasures in heaven. God, how do I align myself with the purposes of heaven and investing in your kingdom? And when you do, um, with joy, man, there's such a blessing associated with that. And so um, I would just encourage you to, to pray about this and to think about, well, what does that look like for me? Maybe that's a tithe of 10% of my my net income. Maybe it's more than that. And you know what? God will bless you in that. And so appreciate this question, and hopefully that's helpful. 2 Corinthians 9, I think, is a great passage to look at when thinking about giving in the context of the church.